In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard cloaks were lost. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmose the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the Bell Tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, then, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly, some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I... I think I know that name. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Oh, of course. Lodgok said he was an ancestor of Renrock. Now, oh, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here in the Bell Tower entrance hall. Revenia. Hmm, interesting. Grimbled weft. Hmm. Best keep searching. These bits of broom are all that's left of a witch called Selene Warnock. Rumor has it, she was demonstrating Sir Skagglebot the Heedless once challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical chairs. Care to guess who won? Never strays from the bell tower. This Grimbold web sounds like a helpful fellow. Not a hero of the rebellion. This is a centuries old library. Centuries. Can you tell me where I might find Grimbald Weft? Oh, yes, Grimbald Weft. Quick with a needle and thread, that one. He's a fascinating artifact of the Goblin Rebellion of 1752. At any rate, he can be found nearby, perched in his case. Rebellion.
handy resource indeed, your field guide. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of these scholarly pursuits. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Athbuddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal Rebellion. knights, or rather, statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen-eyed students will spot the statue of Sir Athbuddle of Ath the cheerful countenance nestled above the sun. Won by vanquishing foes in single combat. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Afpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing. Died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. But imagine how dull my lectures would be without goblin rebellions to discuss. Hmm. History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that. <laughs>